CHDC. Uh, the business of mining in the Bowen and Galilee basins, very, very large and very short sense, I should say, uh, very large plantations. Uh, obviously, we're into a, probably a, the middle of a 20-year staged uh, change in our region here. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, our speaker this morning had to address, I guess, where they're up to. Uh, there's been a palpable change, I guess, in confidence and perception about just where it is as, as a nation deals with the bigger, bigger picture issues of balance of trade, uh, important figures recently. Um, at a more micro level, this community is concerned about those things that are very, very important and change a lot of things in our community. And those things are just how the resources industry is progressing. There's been some traditional changes there. We're going to hear about some of those this morning. The first speaker is uh, Paul McKenna. Paul came, uh, came to us uh, in Vaughan from Ipswich. He's very good friends with um, someone you know pretty well here, uh, Peter Dowen, so he's from Ipswich. That's a short sentence as well, full stop. Um, as you know, uh, a very, very uh, vigorous community um, in terms of uh, community involvement, community spirit, and it's great that we've had uh, Peter Dowling here for a number of years. Paul went to school with uh, Peter. We're going to have a chat later on. Paul will obviously speak to us about their project with QCC. Paul has um, 28 years of experience in the energy and resources industry, so he has extremely uh, uh, long association. Uh, he expertise spans a number of facets in the mining industry with particular emphasis on coal and, and um, coal seam gas resources. And unconventional hydrocarbons. I've always wanted to meet an unconventional hydrocarbon. Uh, and obviously based on precious, precious, precious metals. Uh, obviously, uh, if you've read the uh, bio on Paul in, in some of your information facts, he comes to us uh, through QCC, and I'd ask Paul to speak about it. So, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Kerry. Introduction and uh, and the reference to Ipswich. So yes, I hail from Ipswich. Uh, grew up there. It was a uh, when I was there, it was a small mining town. It was uh, mining was integrated into the, the daily life uh, of Ipswich. There was uh, the, the miners were generally well paid uh, compared to the rest of the community, but nine out of ten people were uh, tradesmen. Uh, the, the suburbs were called uh, Blackstone, our soccer sides were called Coal Stars, uh, and this was before the introduction of Fly In, Fly Out. My family uh, has a background in coal mining with my grandfather coming in uh, from Scotland to mine in uh, two foot seams uh, with a pick and shovel at night in about 1930. Uh, Probably similar, similar to Emerald, we read uh, Sporting Heroes, had pubs on every street corner, and it was bloody hot in summer and cold in winter. Uh, my background, I grew up in the electricity industry. I've, uh, I'm a tradesman, st started off as a tradesman. I've worked in gas pipelines, gas development, uh, upstream gas development with uh, coal seam gas and unconventional hydrocarbons. They're, they're not that unconventional, uh, and obviously coal mining with QCC. And please excuse my nerves, everyone. The last presentation that I gave was to the traditional owners about three hours west of Alice Springs, so only 10% uh, could actually speak English uh, and had an interpreter. So please excuse my nerves. Queensland Coal Corporation. Queensland Coal Corporation, it's an Australian owned company. We're focused on exploration and development of resources throughout Australia. We're based in Brisbane. We have a physical presence here in Emerald and regional Queensland, as well as uh, Hong Kong and India. We're not an ASX listed company. Uh, QCC's goal is to commercialise this large portfolio of coal resources profitably, safely, and sustainably. Our coal projects are located in Bowen, Surat and Galilee basins and our work is for the benefit of all stakeholders. 
you, you see the tagline, the next generation of coal companies, why the next generation? We're small, we're nimble, and a very focused company. We have uh, traditional values and value relationships with our stakeholders. We're very fortunate to have world-class assets, uh, which we, we, we wish to build around a sustainable business. We have a very driven and innovative culture, uh, and again, strong relationships and focus on key stakeholders. We, uh, we have plans for international growth, that we have small community values. The Whit Wilton Coal Project is our principal coal project. Uh, it's held by an entity uh, called uh, of, of QCC or Queensland Coal Corporation. It's held by an entity called Queensland, which has conducted community engagement over the past year with various focus groups. We've had information stands and preparation and various community events. The Wilton Coal Project is located 40 kilometres northeast of Emerald and is adjacent to the Emerald Mine. Uh, the, the area of the EPC spans about 120 kilometres in area. Uh, we've lodged a uh, mineral lease application and mining development lease application in 2011. The project is well advanced through all the approval stages and uh, we're currently going through the resource logistics uh, strategies, landholder negotiations and stakeholder relationships. Our EIS, our environmental impact study, so EIS is also well advanced. The resource is a, uh, an open cut coking coal project. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a dual reference of 6.2 billion tonnes. Uh, we see this as being a major coal project within the region and generating many benefits. The development is well advanced and the first, pro first production is planned in 2015-2016. The project has a 50 year mine life and uh, will employ up to about 300 employees in the construction stage. We're very fortunate to have the synergies of infrastructure uh, which is railway line crossing the block and uh, also rail siding. Have electricity uh, supply uh, onto, the, onto the area as well at, at high voltage. Uh, the Blackwater Rail System runs directly through the tenement leading to Gladstone. We've carried out a detailed exploration program and appraisal program on the World Coal Project uh, along with survey and environmental studies. We've used local suppliers uh, to undertake borehole drilling and rehabilitation. We've identified over 500 points of interest over the project through extensive geological mapping. Various environmental studies have been conducted including soil surveys, flora and fauna studies in preparation for the environmental impact study. Cultural Heritage and Native Title Agreements are in place. Cultural Heritage Management Plan uh, Agreement is in an advanced stage. And you'll see from the photo here, in 2012 we fenced off a, uh, a sacred site of the traditional owners in the area. The beginning of this, of this year, we have uh, carried out two bulk samples. So this is this, a uh, cross team, as you, you may be aware, so large trench. Uh, this was pretty exciting uh, for us to see coal within uh, eight, to, 8 to 12 metres. Uh, we carried out two cross teams. Uh, we op opened the hole, we used some uh, Gordon Graham's plant iron. And, and he, uh, he carried out that project for us, which was almost flawlessly done, or was flawlessly done. And uh, we took 244 gallon drums of coal, and we've got some of those in storage, and we've sent, uh, we've sent I think, eight, eight drums to, the, to Virginia for coal quality testing and uh, that's currently underway. We hope to get those results back within the next few weeks. And while we've done that, is the type of coal that it is, it's a hard coking coal. Obviously, 
need to understand the caking properties of that coal and then how we can tail and make a, a wash plant to that coal. So again, uh, we'd like to thank uh, Graham's plant hire for your efforts in uh, helping us out there, Graham, uh, Gordon. Uh, the holes were opened and closed to the two costines within seven days and rehabilitated. Obviously that's rehabilitation. Two weeks, first photo here, two weeks, and this one on the 13th of February. Uh, approximately 70 tonnes of this bulk sample was extracted from two major coal seams, the Burn Grove and Fairhill formations, which are part of the Fort Cooper coal measures. Uh, the uh, second photo here, as, as I said, we didn't actually plant any. Uh, we didn't any plant any grasses on there. They were the the, the uh, landscape nat naturally regenerated. This is uh, QCC's project development framework and my background is in project development and I've seen a lot of projects in Queensland fail and not get up and, and that's been due to not having the fundamentals of, of projects. So when, I come, when I've come into QCC, this is the way we think, this is the way the company's thinking, that we, we want ticks and boxes, we need to have a green light. Those that haven't got a green light, we're yet to negotiate and, uh, and, and come to agreement. Uh, these, these are essentials to have a project, be it a power station project, gas project, coal mine, you have to have ticks in the boxes. Infrastructure, our discussions with potential infrastructure partners are well advanced and ongoing. Uh, We've been contacted by a number of companies interested in QCC to take up their excess capacity uh, from unused take or pay agreements. Uh, we've been looking at uh, and been asked to submit submissions of interest to uh, for planned port developments uh, in, uh, in Bowen, Gladstone, Wiggins Island, and also uh, the Fitzroy River project. We've got some supply options for power and water, and, the, and these are currently uh, being negotiated. Uh, we're also considering the housing uh, for uh, the options for housing in the region uh, with our community focus groups. And we'll work with uh, council in uh, all our negotiations. We're also taking into consideration the latest changes in the Emerald community and the information we receive uh, from our focus groups and we want to make a, uh, maintain a close relationship with the local community. <coughs> commitments, QCC's commitments, they are to stay safe, protect the environment, build trust, integrity and benefit the community. Stay safe, safety will be our number one priority as we develop the project. Our aim is zero harm. Our safety, safety ethos uh, extends past the field into our offices and it's instilled through all our employees. QCC is committed to the protection of the environment that we work in and our goal is to have maximum benefit for minim minimum impact. Our cost teams were rehabbed immediately and successfully we attended, and we tend to operate across the business in this way. This is through progressive rehabilitation, which we will carry on for the duration of our project. That means we strive to clean up after ourselves. Uh, our aim is to build trust. Our business is not sustainable without the support of all key stakeholders, landholders, community, uh, traditional owners, and government. QCC Group is committed to building these long-term positive relationships with all our stakeholders and this cannot be achieved without trust. Our trust will be, uh, your, your trust will be earned by ourselves through our honesty and doing what we say we'll do. Uh, my person, personal ethos is there's no buck passing in QCC. Our people take personal responsibility for all our actions and I'm quite happy for you to call us directly and call myself directly. QCC, as I said, small, nimble company, but it's a company with principles. 
our commitment is to treat all people inside and outside the organisation with dignity and respect. Uh, we're not a faceless corporation, all our people are accountable and we take ownership of all our actions. And at all times we'll try to see things through the eyes of our stakeholders. Our, sorry I've forgotten to show you the papers. So that's, that's the cost team uh, work. Uh, rehabilitation work. KCC's long term success goes hand in hand with enhancing our broader community and social well being. We're dedicated to maintaining continuous open and supportive relationship with local council and CHDC to enable successful planning. Uh, the, state of the state of the economy and community has changed over the past 12 months. We want to understand these changes by holding further community consultation and, and incorporate this feedback into our planning. QCC Group is focused on gaining all the approvals to, to properly develop this project. Uh, we are in the early stages of development and um, we're looking forward to working with the community to try and bring this project to uh, development and operation. I thank you very much for your time. So Brad's our 
another one of our ETNs, so please make yourself known to Brad as well. Sorry, Brad. I think most of you know a fair bit about Hancock, particularly, and last time I was here, I know that I went through the Hancock coal side of things, first Australian company prospecting. So I wasn't planning to go through a whole lot of detail, but we've brought in um, partners, GBK, in the meantime. Um, I don't know if Paul's pulling my leg or not, but he says the Vice Chairman from India is now following him on Twitter. <laughs> there you go, he is. So it's a small world. Um, I, I haven't done Twitter yet, by the way, so. Um, um, in, in effect, so I'll, I'll focus a little bit on the GBK side just because it's probably more new to you. And GBK's background, I guess, is predominantly in infrastructure. They um, build and operate and own two of the major airports in India, Mumbai, the major airport there, and also Bangalore. And they're doing a massive um, rebuild of Mumbai at the moment, doubling it in size. I think from memory has about 45 million passengers go through it a year, which is probably from an Australian point of view quite a, I, I think Brisbane does four or five million. So. Um, it's, they deal in big numbers when they came and looked at Queensland, just to give you a comparison. What they have in population, we have in land, acreage. And so every time they went, wow, there's not many people, but there's lots of land. When we go to India, we go, wow, there's just so many people and no spare land. So a completely different approach in one sense. But we both, it's very wonderful that they've come over here and basically first thing they did was come out and meet all the mayors and local council and everything like that as well. So, and they also retained the Australian management team, fortunately, while we can be here today. They also, in terms of their first, they do a lot of firsts with everything. So they were the first um, independent power plant in India, so they're into power generation as well. They also done the first toll road in India and built a six-lane highway over there. And so they do lots of firsts as well as having a great deal of tradition. Um, Mumbai Airport, for example, will actually, when it's reconfigured, have not only um, all of the latest mod cons in um, airports, but will actually have a whole history section as well, like a massive heritage section going on over there as well. So it's um, a nice mix with Hancock private companies, um, both working together. One of the major things that I do like to say when introducing GBK also is that they have a significant um, community um, ownership and as I said the first thing they did was come out to meet all the local mayors and councillors and then came back so even um, I'm looking at Paul here so and, um, and I really must know where Peter is where's me okay um, he promised to sit next to me and do they also have a great um, community side of things over in India and one of the key things that they do in terms of their contribution back to the community is actually run in I think nine, nine of the states in India a um, ambulance service, an emergency response service which India didn't have in a lot of those places and they operate a call centre and ambulances and have about actually gone up from about 80,000 to 25,000 people working there. On average, the work that they do in that sphere actually saves about 300 lives a day in India, which um, I think is probably the thing that they feel most proud of. And if, they, if the vice chairman was here himself, he could give you a whole presentation on that section of the line. So big infrastructure looking to come into Australia, working with Hancock and going into resources. I'll go through each of these projects separately very quickly for you. I think probably you're aware of Alfred and Kevin's Corner, they're two adjacent tenements out um, west of here. And um, then we have a third prospective tenement next door to that. And we also have our rail port, which probably most of you are quite familiar with. Reasons why GBK came over also is because of 
there's this still huge need, and I know there's a lot of discussion at the moment about whether or not coal is good, bad, or indifferent. Basically, I guess everyone else in the world, in the developing world, wants what we've got. So power, electricity, etc. So um, we've been quite focused on making sure that um, we get the messages out that there's still a great need for in the, third, in the developing countries to have, I guess, what we take for granted. Sorry. I know I should be able to multitask brilliantly being a woman, but holding the mic and doing this. Um, this is probably the key curve and the key slide for putting our message across in one sense that the green, this is a benchmark study, all the other companies have been taken off except for their numbers. To be sustainable and profitable in what's a thermal coal business as opposed to met coal business, you need to have a significant quantity of coal, obviously, and both of our mines are approximately 30 million tonne per annum compositions. But you also need to be at the lowest end of the global cost curve in the current market because the emerging countries are coming into the markets. As um, Kerry alluded to earlier, we've got the global financial crisis seeming to come and go repeatedly. And we wanted to be a sustainable long-term business here for over, for the very long term, we have over 100 years supply of coal out in our tenements and it's good quality thermal coal but we need to be right at the base of the cost structure. So um, right now we're targeting at about 55 US dollars FOB, maybe give or take a little bit on that. But we're about in the green patch there, patch there compared to everyone else. And that's the main driver for, one of the key drivers for us is to make sure that we stay down there so that we can be there for the very long haul. I'm pretty sure you all know where we are, but we've um, got Alpha down the bottom, Alpha West to the left of that, and then Kevin's corner to the right. Alpha's predominantly open cut. Um, in fact, all open cut. Kevin's corner has a mix of open cut and underground. Um, like Paul, we did a test pit in 2011. <coughs> It was 125,000 tonnes of coal over to South Korea and China. It burnt better than we thought, which was great. It's good to have something go right. Um, it's actually stayed there in the test pit because it's the first part of the alpha mine, so we hope that it'll become the first um, component of the new mine. In terms of milestones achieved, and hopefully you'll see some significant progress since last time, we had um, all of our, our environmental approvals have basically all gone through both the state and federal government. Our mining lease is out for public consultation and closes very soon, not today. Um, so we're hoping that that is the final key plank in the mine will come through. And we, in terms of Kevin's Corner, our second project, it's um, just finished all of its environmental stuff and is awaiting reports from government as well with all of our conditions on it. Our railway remains, I think, the same as I presented last time, so I'll race through this part of it. It's still a um, very lovely railway line. A little biased. It's scalable to 120 million tonnes per annum if it's needed. It's certainly third party accessible. We put out public expressions of interest for other people to use our railway. And I think in December last year we announced that we had a 20 million tonne MOU with QCOL, so that's in the northern more in the bottom basin, but um, certainly the more times we get on it, the better. In terms of the railway also, we've um, got to a fair degree of progress with that, including the EIS, so we really are simply now looking for woods and the pr primary focus of most people in back at work will be on getting the ECIs and construction contracts through. I don't know if the port, um, at the moment we have our port approvals, but there's also um, the final approval we need to dredging and approval that's being done through the Port Authority out at um, Ava Point, on the Port and Bolt Ports Corporation. Um, that's about, for us, about 700,000 cubic metres, I think, of dredging. That's about 10 days worth of dredging, I think, that we would need, ultimately, to get it up to about 19, 20 metres. We're currently in deep water at about 17.2 metres, so you can actually bring in um, certainly a fairly large Panamax for that. You probably can't bring the biggest capies in for that. So we have naturally deep water, which is fantastic. 
We're going to build a replica, if you like, you'll see the same as what's out at Abbott Point at the moment, which is a trestle and burst structure. So um, sticking to the tried and true with the port. And um, the other thing to note, I think, about Abbott Point is the fact being closest to the Asian markets where we're focused on, it also has um, Palm Passage, and that's probably the best natural channel to bring ships into Queensland, I think, by far. Apparently, it's so big and wide, you can see it on space, you know, from space, from the satellite photos at times. So. So one thing we have done with the port that we haven't quite got to with the other construction elements yet is we've actually got the Samsung and Smithbridge is the joint venture for construction, detailed engineering and construction at the port. So Smithbridge is a um, Brisbane-based company based out of here. They do a lot of work at the port of Brisbane and Samsung is a Korean company, South Korean company. And yes, um, they have a big coal power uh, um, as well as um, dry, uh, all port materials, as well as TVs, etc. So. I figured that might be good to show you that we're actually at phase three now in terms of getting ready for construction. This is, of course, still based on the fact that we get all of these residual approvals we need. We can't take anything for granted. And on that basis, we're at phase three. Obviously, with Samsung, the support, we've actually gone to the final announcement. And with the others, we're generally down to the last two. Certainly, for rail, we're down to the last two contractors. And we're hoping that, obviously, we get all of this done this year. I've put down there, because I'm not sure, and I couldn't find, I don't think there's anyone here from the Queensland government working on the ICN, they go by their employment areas. But um, with just revamping the websites, and ICN Industry Capability Network is revamping the websites that they have with our projects. So if you're interested and haven't, you can, when they reopen the site up in a couple of weeks' time, it will be all revamped, updated, new look, easier to use. And um, that's where we ask if you can put your details if you're interested in future work through our contractors predominantly, because the system is that there'll be five major contracts awarded, such as Samsung, CNT, and then obviously they'll be employing directly on that basis as well. And then ICN actually packages all of that information into the way we want it packaged up and give it to us in that form. Probably advertising the government service too much, but it is, it is actually probably the one thing we get that's really well done from government. Sorry, didn't mean that way. <laughs> 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 um, in terms of marketing, well, um, we've got this is the destinations for most of our coal. Again, it's just showing a tremendous growth. Curve. Um, our marketing manager, Chris Hartley, has actually exceeded all of He's overachieved compared to the rest of us, I think. That's his commitment. He has um, overcommitted in terms of um, coal sales, which is why we ramped up Kevin's Corner so very quickly and why we've started now to look at Alpha West. Out of that, GBK from India, even though they have power stations, etc., is not in that list yet because when they came into the company, we already had.